discuss making an intrusion bend on a T-loop arch wire. This is very, very often necessary uh, during mechanics, especially re extraction case mechanics, as the bite deepens from the incisor retraction. So what it does, it makes the premaxillary area uh, go lower than it normally would because the wire has flexibility in it, and basically you're going to intrude just to make it be back to level again. So the armamentaria for this are a millimeter ruler, and then T-loop arch wire, and then a tweed plier. And this tweed plier, let me get it up here where you can see it, move this aside for a moment. A tweed plier is just basically a small three-prong plier. And you can see here, I have the two-beak side on the bottom and the single-beak side on the top, so that when I squeeze that together, it will bend the arch wire. In your instruments, you have a tweed plier, you have a three-prong plier, and then you have a hollow chop plier. All three of those are three-prong pliers, they're just different sizes. So this is the only one of those three that can fit inside the loop to do the intrusion that you would like to do. Okay, So let me get the wire out of the bag here. And this wire has flexibility in it because of the amount of wire inside the loop. So that's why we can do this intrusion bend and you'll still have enough flexibility to deflect it into the brackets without breaking the brackets off. And the first part of this, of course, is done extra orally. You're going to remove the wire to do that. And you're going to place the plier on the wire in this fashion. And I'll show it to you in a better angle here in just a moment. So in here, and the plier is going to go right next to the distal aspect of that loop. And you should be able to see I've got the, the single beak side on the top and the double beak side is on the bottom. I'm going to back it up right into this radius on that side, but don't fall off the radius. That means don't go down in here. It's got to stay on the straight side of the wire. And very good. So now convince yourself when I squeeze that handle together that the front part of the wire, the anterior segment, is going to go up. And notice that the plier is perpendicular to a tangent on the curve of the wire. And this is, whoops, excuse me, this is the tangent of the curve. So you do not want this or this. You would like it to be straight. And for a good discussion of this, you could view my um, custom wire bending video, and it describes the, that in more detail. So here, <clears throat> with that in place, now I'm going to squeeze it, and the front is going to go up. So there we go. The front is going to go up, and you can see that. Now don't squeeze the plier fully together. It will make the bend be too big. So I'm going to make this one be very small for demonstration purposes. Very good. And then now what you simply do is remove the plier, turn the plier over, and then you go staying on the straight section like that. And then you are going to bend it back down. So now you have the two beak side on the top, single beak side on the bottom. And then when you squeeze it together like that, you can see that the legs come back together. And then you need the legs to be touching one another so that if you're using the loop, excuse me, if you're using the loop for a cinch back, that it's the right size. Now that bend can be no bigger than one millimeter, or usually three quarter to one millimeter, or you simply cannot get it into the bracket slots. And notice that the anterior segment and the posterior segments are still flat and parallel. There's no potato chip or torque or anything built into this. It should just be dead flat. And then you're going to repeat that on the contralateral side and do the exact same thing over here. And <clears throat> uh, let's see if we can see it with the plastic ruler. This should be about one millimeter of intrusion. So when I place that ruler on here, oops, place that ruler on here, yep, you can see that that's one millimeter of intrusion. That's perfect. So no more than that. And <laughs> you may... You may hear some people talk about doing the intrusion by squeezing just the mesial aspect of the loop right here with a with a hollow chop plier, excuse me, with a uh, how plier or a light wire plier. And I discourage you from doing that. It's very, very dangerous to do that. And I can show you a demonstration of that in a moment. But I want to go back to this one millimeter concept. And doctors, the wire thickness from here to here is 19 thousandths of an inch. And the metric equivalent of that is 0 0.3839 is the number of inches in a millimeter. So call it 40 thousandths of an inch. This is 19 thousandths of an inch. 
So this is about one half of a millimeter. So all I do when I do this clinically, I just eyeball two wire widths from here to here, and that's about a millimeter. That's all you need. So again, this, if you do the conversion, this is a half a millimeter. So I just eyeball two wire widths, and that's all you've got. But hey, I mean, if you want to measure it and do all that fancy stuff, go ahead. The loop has to touch uh, together again like that, and the loop should be parallel in this plane of space so that there is no additional torque or anything in the loop. Okay, so this was a very nicely executed intrusion bend, and you would just duplicate it here. This is an extra oral bend. Doctors do not try this in the mouth because you can't see what you're doing. So now I want to show you that intrusion bend, that intrusion bend uh, with a light wire plier where I'm going to place the, the plier, excuse me, I'm going to put the plier around the loop right here and then squeeze it together. And some instructors talk about doing it this way. And I'm telling you, this is an exceedingly dangerous way to do this. And another method that can be used is a how plier. And I'll put that how plier on here and show you that again. Some guys like to use that because it doesn't slip as much. And again, I wouldn't do this bend. It's supposed to just intrude the front section, the anterior section, and look similar to this as an outcome. But what happens very often, it detorques the daylights out of the wire. And when the patient comes back, you see you have made it way, way worse and not better. So let's see if I do that. And this is probably going to destroy the arch wire. But that's okay. And... So when I squeeze it together, and you see that, it went super fast, like I couldn't control it carefully enough. And look at what happened. Instead of intruding, I'm extruding the incisors by about four to five millimeters. So you could imagine this would be a disaster. But intraorally, in the mouth, it doesn't look too bad when you, when you make that activation if you do it intraorally. So again, I would like you to remove the wire and do this extraorally. Number two, do not try this on a keyhole wire and don't get me wrong it can be done but it's exceedingly difficult to do this amount of flexibility in the loop is much better than a keyhole for the intrusion bend like this all right so again i'm going to suggest that you order a couple of extra 1925 t-loop wires and practice that intrusion bend so that you are accomplished with it and the first squeeze remember don't squeeze that fully together or the loop, excuse me, the intrusion bend is going to be way, way too big. So just a little bit, and then don't use the bend mesial side of the loop unless you're very, very experienced. It's just too dangerous to do it that way. Okay, docs, that will conclude this video. I hope you found that helpful. Goodbye.